share. What's in the news? Waverly Hills. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Isn't that where Selena Gomez like lived as a wizard? That's Waverly Place. So back in April, fans of the paranormal showed up at Waverly Hills in protest in support of the current owners, Charles and Tina Mattingly. Yeah, what exactly were they protesting? Well, they don't like the fact that the Historical Society currently wants them off the property. But first, a little history. In 1911, Waverly Hills opened up um, as a sanatorium, basically to house uh, patients of tuberculosis. It was being used for about 50 years before it closed down. The problem was, in 1943, with the invention of uh, streptomycin, there was no need for a facility like that anymore. The remaining patients were shipped out to smaller facilities and the place closed down. That was in 1961. So it only stayed open for 50 years? Yeah. Roughly? Wow. But that's where it gets weirder. Okay. This has a crazy history. In 1962, it was opened again as a nursing home, dealing with mainly dementia patients and um, uh, special needs. Mm -hmm. But that only lasted for about 20 years because it closed down in 1982. In 1983, the building was, was bought again for $3 million and 5000 $3 million, $5,000. That's Odd nice. price. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they, I guess that's tax. I don't know. It was, it was bought to be used as a prison but completely vetoed by the town because they did not want a prison there. So that fell through. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then the last part, in 1996, it was purchased again. They wanted to turn it into a house of worship, but they had really eccentric ideas of it. They wanted to build the world's tallest Jesus statue there, Okay. Inspired by Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. Okay. It would be 150 feet high. What? <laughs> costing an estimated $4 million. Then the building itself was going to be um, uh, repurposed as a house of worship, a theater, and a, uh, a gift shop with an estimated price of $8 million. So $12 million to carry on this project. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it fell through. They didn't raise quite the amount of funds. Uh, what are we talking? $3,000. <laughs> yes. For oh, purposes of comparison oh, here, if something cost $1,200, oh <laughs> here, here's $3. <laughs> Put it towards it. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. Look at Three... $3,000 <laughs> with an estimated $12 million budget. Oh, wow. So um, That must have hurt. Yeah, so that kind of <laughs> fell through, and it's been pretty much abandoned ever since, but used uh, for seasonal things, like mm -hmm. uh, haunted houses and things like, like that. But what else has been going on with that place? Well, right now, there is controversy going on between the historical society and the family that currently owns it. Let's say an argument as to who is in charge and who is not. Now this has been going on for quite a few years. The Mattingleys, or Charles Mattingly, uh, was the originator, the founder of the historical society and their purpose was to preserve the Waverly Hills. Um, they were to be, you know, pay for all the bills, the maintenance, the repairs, you know, take care of all that fun stuff. And the Mattingleys owned the building. As time went on, maybe things weren't documented so well or set in stone, but allegedly some of the funds were going to the pockets of the family. Now, eventually the IRS was to step in, do their investigation, and to settle things, the Historical Society signed a 99-year lease agreement with the Mattingleys that they would be allowed to function as a tax-exempt organization and the Mattingleys would stay on the property as the owners. The Mattingleys are trying to accuse the Historical Society of kind of banding together. Well, the family, I'm sure, feels slighted after no longer being on the board. Why, why do they want them off, though? There are, are a lot of things that they're accusing this family of doing. Um, and, and one of them is that 
apparently Charlie had gone on to the historical society side of the property. He started cutting down trees, logging, you know, basically, and taking it off the property and selling it and keeping the money. It was in the... Bless you? Bless you. No, stop. Okay, there we go. Wow. <laughs> The historical society would give money to Charlie in order to maintain the property. So within reason, he would be granted tools and things that he would need to, you know, do this job. But apparently he bought excavators <laughs> and thousands of dollars in tools, wow. which walked off the property. It's not in their possession. So there's a lot of he said, she said, back and forth, you know, type of things going on. Not good. Right. See, now keep in mind, when we first started looking this up, it seemed very cut and dried of the whole this whole Save the Waverly. But as we dug a little deeper, the, it seems pretty gray. If you've seen anything going around that says Save Waverly Hills, just know that the money you send for Save the Waverly goes towards their legal defense and not to the Waverly. I mean, what the Save the Waverly Hills campaigns are saying is that uh, that the Historical Society is looking for $20 million from taxpayers' money, which they don't state that at all, okay? Mm -hmm. That they're looking to kick the Mattingly family out, which they're not, because they did sign that 99-year lease with right. them, allowing them to stay. Um, I think, though, apparently, what I, after researching, that they did su such a long list of wrongdoings, it might have gotten to the point now that they have no choice to remove them from the property because things have been going over the years where apparently this family has blocked the entrance, the main entrance, to, to enter the place, which oh, if you go back into the deed, the Waverly always had access to that road. Right. So there's controversy over whether the Mattingleys own it or the Historical Society owns it. So you can't even use the main road apparently right now. They've been blocking the Historical Society from getting the mail, which they have all right to see the mail and see so what... Is that a federal offense? Right. Well, exactly. <laughs> but the problem is because the Mattingleys own the property, they own the building, you know, they're interjecting so technically to matters on the Historical Society. And what's really happening with all this back and forth is the Waverly Hills is the place that's losing out because business has been lost. There have been events that have been canceled, like a Christmas laser light show. There was supposed to be filming going on there, that that got canceled because they just intervened and made it so uncomfortable for the board to walk onto the property. So now um, please understand, we're not trying to give an opinion or sway an opinion one way or another. What we suggest is, if this topic is interesting to you, definitely look it up form your own opinion on this you know get all the get all the facts on this um yeah i mean we're going to actually put in our description the actual full litigation report by the historical society and you can read it all yourself what it is that they've accused this family of doing um also we will put in there the save the waverly campaign and, you know they're gonna and they'll say everything that they think that the historical society is doing so you can read both back and forth and make your own decision before boycotting the Waverly Hills in general because by doing that in our opinion you're only hurting the Waverly Hills you right. know because no matter what side owns the rights to keeping the upkeep or funding it by you guys not showing up and supporting it and going that's actually hurting the Waverly Hills because right, if there's no funds going into it right you know, so let, you know, basically what we're saying is let the courts decide. Everything is in black and white. Everything has been recorded, documented, I'm sure, by either side. The judge will be the final judge. And again, the, the bottom line is we want the Waverly saved. If it's the Mattingleys or the Historical Society, mm -hmm. that's up in the air. But as far as the Waverly, uh, the Waverly Hills itself... Um, this has been known in the paranormal world as a, a very active place. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have happened there. Yeah, I mean, we're um, looking forward 
as a team to going there. And, yeah, and at this some is, point, yeah. yeah, I mean, this is so big in the paranormal world. The Waverly has always been on international shows. Oh, a ghost, lot, ghost you know, hunters, yeah, a ghost lot of adventures. YouTubers always yeah. want to try to go there. Um, it's it's incredible. So you know, if this is just near and dear to a lot of us and right. all of us. Um, so we want to see it keep going. Um, we feel for the Mattingly family. Hopefully they do get what's deserving to them as well as the historical society. Maybe a peaceful solution can come out of it, know. you know? Yeah, because this was this April and this is still ongoing now. So as far as what the current litigation of this whole thing is, we have no idea. Uh, but we definitely want to check out if anybody has any additional information on this. Yes, please yeah. uh, leave it in the comments. We didn't touch on everything, but why, you know, why would you, as a ghost hunter, want to go to the Waverly? To hunt ghosts? That's <laughs> it. That, <that's laughs> you mean you don't want to see the fourth floor where the shadow people reside? Oh, the shadow people. Right? Shadow people. Shadow people. Yes. Now the question about this is what I, what I find very interesting is, like I said earlier, as far as the history, this was a sanatorium, it was a nursing home, a neglected dimension. Prior to it even being a sanatorium, it started out as a school. So my question is, the spirits that haunt that place, when are they from? <laughs> yeah, you know? There's a lot going Did on Did they here. die of tuberculosis? <laughs> were they... Were they... Were they, were they died of neglect from the nursing home? I mean, there's a lot yeah, of things. There's, like there's a lot. Well, like yeah. anything else, there was experiments going on. But mainly when it was a tuberculosis hospital, it was like state of the art. I mean, it was well kept. It was actually beautiful. And they had a lot of open space and areas for these patients to lay out in the open. Because that was the biggest thing to do, is to be in the air. That was supposedly the biggest cure. Um, but it's sad, if you see some of the, the pictures, they're in beds in the winter time out on the veranda or on a pa on the patio literally in the snow with snow all over them wrapped up in blankets trying to breathe the air Jeez. some of the stories say that uh, the tuberculosis patients were insane and that's what's making it real scary and haunted <laughs> but no no they they were not insane that they were allowed to roam freely like all the other right. patients were allowed. They were regular people that right. just got with sick. You know? Respiratory with, problems. Right. <laughs> I'm sure, like with that amount of, or volume of people, you might have had the crazy here and there. We're yeah. not going to deny that. Um, but you know, and then there was also rumors that hundreds of thousands of people died in this place. Um, there, there's a controversy over the amount, but when hundreds it thousands, <laughs> I don't know. or that tens of thousands, uh, whatever Jeez. they say, but. Um, it boils down to really it was about six thousand in the in the fifty years, which is still a lot of people to well, die tuberculosis in was also, one area. That's well, a lot of people. Yes, I mean tuberculosis was a horrible, horrible uh, affliction you could have mm -hmm. um, until you know obviously life you know life saving drugs were invented. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, yeah, you know what some of the procedures with, that they did. They, they would actually oh, like, like bloodletting and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, well, they cracked some ribs and removed some muscle so that the lungs could expand wider and get more air in. Nice. Like, they, not many of them survived that procedure. I don't know if you heard about the body shoot. This is the one area in the paranormal that they all go crazy over because the bodies were actually led through this tunnel down through oh, the death tunnel yeah the death tunnel the body chute they call it yeah you know, led out to the trains and hauled off the property because they didn't want the patients to see how many people were actually being taken out dead a day like oh, there they, goes they, larry yeah you know there's also the infamous fifth floor uh there's a lot going on up there um specifically room 502. two nurses were killed in that room uh, one by hanging. They said she hung from a light fixture up there. But another one, I think, jumped, and they don't really know why. But if any one of you have been there and have experienced something, please let us know because we haven't been there. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to what we may soon discover. Exactly. Someday, you know? So, yeah, you have any information on either the Waverly or the topic that we, we spoke of, please leave, uh, leave a message in the comments. And also, while you're at it, hit the like button and subscribe and share this with all your friends. And uh, I think that wraps up this episode.
We did it. Barely. <laughs> Bye. I think you were early on the wave. What? You waved early. How? How? Wave early. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go